This program is designed to provide general information with regards to the subject matters covered. This information is given with the understanding that neither the hosts, guests, sponsors, or station are engaged in rendering any specific and personal medical, financial, legal, counseling, professional service, or any advice. You should seek the services of competent professionals before applying or trying any suggested ideas. Brian, Sebastian, movie reviews and more. If it is Tuesday, first of all, it's always Giving Tuesday. Not once a year, every Tuesday of the year. You got to give your favorite charities and foundations no matter what they may be. Obviously, we're striving, stri- you know, striving. What's wrong with me? Streaming on over 100 outlets as usual around the world. So Spotify, Pandora, iHeartRadio, Twitter, everything. And Tosh, this is show, our, our 92nd live show in a row. Still going strong. Which is what you get there. So I got to start this off with this. Exactly, right? All the way from Miami. Locally top. Singer, songwriter, dancer, that all around cool shit. And she's always doing a lot of stuff. I couldn't be more happier and proud of one of my co hosts. As the other ones, I'm going to, you know, they just text me saying they're going to be popping on. Locally Tosh. (laughs) And with this, you know, I didn't know about this guy. I knew, I knew, I knew his work, you know. But when I went back and watched some of it, I'm like, oh, I recognize this guy's work. Not only is he a creative, you know, he, he, he's that globally acclaimed conceptual artist and painter. He's that award-winning artist. I love the stuff that he does when it comes to echoing messages for hope, love, and unity. Because I believe in world peace. It took me 16 years to believe in that. So that, for me, being that Buddhist, twice a day, that's really, really important to me. And so when it comes to that art, that's very, very important. It's always about showcasing artists, whether they're dancers, directors, singers, songwriters, it doesn't matter in the world of fitness, in the world of dressage. Women-owned businesses, specifically women producers, directors, and writers, because they don't get enough, in my, and I say this to a lot of the CEOs in, in Hollywood, they don't get enough credibility as far as I'm concerned. Even my engineer, I tell Rebel, I couldn't do a lot of this without her because she helps us a great deal. But with that, when you're doing a lot of things like that, I love what he also did by being that volunteer and being, you know, that that strong Israeli when it comes to rescuing and recovering those bodies that happened October 7th from that terrible terrorist attack. I also love what he does with, you know, Val Kilmer, you know, Gene Simmons, um, Jonathan Davidson Gordon, what he's done in those global collaborations of things like that. And when it comes to art therapy, nothing I think is more important than that. You know, it's also Tosh, Art Basil. He created a scene there, and I was so happy that he did that. That made me happy. The one and only Toba Perez. So we got to welcome him on now because that's really important. Now, this young lady, I met her on a red carpet at the Los Angeles Week Film Festival. Didn't know who she was, knew her work. She just stood out, Tosh, to me. Not only did she have this vibrant glow around her, she was just smiling from here to here. I'm like, who's this chick? Who's this woman I, that I don't know? She was so nice to me, Tosh. I had, I, she's got to be on our show. There's something about her. And then I went back and like, oh, I've seen her work. She blends in sometimes, but then she sticks out at other times. And on that red carpet, she was shining on that one. I haven't seen her in almost a year. But it's one of those things where you were near that actor, that filmmaker, that writer, director, and that writer, and you've done over 100 campaigns, even on the print side of things. That says you're important. But also, you know, she's worked with uh, Netflix is the dirt. And I say this all off the top of my head. I don't use notes or anything like that. NTIS Hawaii. I wonder if she worked with my friend, uh, Lynn Ham, uh, who's part of us with the Elvis Presley brand, NTIS Los Angeles. And this is us and more. 
And when it comes to that, I didn't know she was a poet. It's always about helping those people who have art. Again, art is really, really important. And when it comes to all those other things like that too, she's also that teacher when it comes to art studio. But I really like this because I wanna come on when I can talk about me directing. And I said, you're a woman director, let's just pick the date, let's go with it. That was really important to me. So she gets a chance to talk about what she's also doing. And I didn't know there was a connection with the art world and that LA Muse. That's important because I have my LA Muse. I mean, who can be in LA and you don't have one? So that's important. And then nonstop Terry Marie showed up. But, you know, Elena, welcome to Movie Reviews. This is important because it's about celebrating the arts, the artists, all the things that go into doing things like that. It is really important. Let's talk about what you're doing now, why you became that director, because I just saw this trailer. I don't even watch trailers on, on purpose because I'll figure it out. I don't want to have to figure a movie out within 10 minutes. But this movie's intriguing. I love what I just saw, and I only saw a taste about that. Let's start off with you. Tell them where you're coming from, who you are, and why you're on Movie Reviews and More besides me inviting you. <laughs> Should I start with that teaser I sent you? <laughs> Oh, uh, <laughs> made that sound really good. <laughs> um, I, well, right now I'm I I have I went to film school for directing, but I kind of pivoted pivoted really went into acting instead. Um, but I've sort of come back to that love of you know cinema. I've always been obviously I'm acting as part of cinema, so um, I just really wanted to invest in directing again. And I've been doing a doc about the LA art scene for a very long time because it's a documentary so I followed it through um, a lot of its stages including the pandemic stage which sort of shut a lot of things down and how now watching it recovering from that um, but it's uh, we're in deep in the editing phase right now so hopefully we're getting close to having a final cut on that but it's been a long process of just following these lives and these artists and um, people like even like Robert Vargas, who does those huge buildings, paint, he like three hands, these massive buildings. Um, so it's, it's, uh, and then I have like even comic book artists are in it. Like there's a whole, there's so many scenes of art that we're representing. And these art models, it's uh, gallery, the gallery girls are primarily who started all of these salons again. It felt like, not started, but they've, they've existed since, you know, forever. But um, it felt to me like that 1920s energy of artists gathering together, live drawing. Um, and these women set up these parties, and which are really more salons, but both, they're both, they're parties and salons, while artists diligently are focused on these art models. Um, so it was a really wonderful seeing into that whole world. And uh, now, right now I'm doing, there's a feature version of this, but right now I'm doing the short version of it, uh, which is about body dysmorphia and OCD. It's fictional, but it's two women who are struggling with this, but it's very expressionistic. So we, I want, my, my goal is for people to, and the writer's goals are that they, we feel what this feels like. So it almost, to me, feels like moving poetry. Um, so I'm very, very excited about that because we were able to do some stuff that felt really fresh to me. And that makes sense. Talk about this poem because it kind of segues into a little bit of what you created. Let's start, you know, last year in Miami, that promotion that you caused, I thought that was great. Hats off to you on that. Talk about that because Taj, I think you might have gone, but I'm not sure if you saw what the whole commotion at our basket in Miami was all about. This is the man that created it. But anytime he gets to disrupt something and make things happen like that, I'm all for it, especially in the art world, because poetry, art, you know, Elena, what you're doing, they all go together and they're a lot tighter now. And I think that's great. Go ahead, Tom, take it away. Let's talk about you, all the things that you've done, but you've also done some other stuff, which we'll talk about later from Israel. Go ahead. I'm Tomer. Um, I've been, you know, I've, I've been living in Los Angeles for the past 20 years. I, I was born and raised in Jerusalem, back in Israel. Um, yeah, you know, uh, the whole Miami thing was was a flash mob, an art installation flash mob. The idea was not to disturb people, but maybe to raise an awareness and to show um, uh, to show you know, my interpretation about the war. So 
I think it was an amazing success because they didn't let us do it. And I got caught and detained by the police, but, um, but the whole crew, everybody got in and they did it without me. So I was controlling while I was with the police, like I was controlling with the police through WhatsApp messages. And I'm like, I'm showing them, Hey, you guys detaining me, but, but everybody's inside. So you guys didn't really stop anything, but the police were so nice and they were so cool with me. Uh, I think the art that people hated me, um, by doing this, but you know, um, it was a little bit disturbing, but, um, but I think it was super peaceful. You know, we, we did not interrupt or disrespect people. So, um, I think that's why it was so success because, uh, we reached our goal as far as raising the awareness. And the second thing was we, we were super respectful. So, um, uh, yeah, that was the Miami thing. Um, <laughs> that's pretty uh, badass. Yeah, seriously. Uh, it was, yeah, it was, like... It, it was it was fun it was you know it was it was great uh among a bunch of different installations i've done um since october 7th i think the miami thing was um uh, most intense one because where got, was it exactly uh, where in inside, miami exactly inside the convention like, center inside oh, the wow, actual okay show. yeah yeah not outside no on the street inside the actual gallery and and i think it was i think the biggest flash mob ever created in in uh, art dazzle wow what, what, what people what people don't understand about that is first of all i always go to la art show and i love going to that i've only been into art maybe the last seven eight years so for me i consider myself a newbie but what i've seen from the artists, from the art gallery owners, we've done a lot of art shows on here and poetry and things like that. I, you know, my hat goes off to artists in general. So I always hashtag the arts and I go from there because not only do you need to showcase the artwares like that, like Terry's creating different things. And I said, Terry, you need to put this out there more. Your stuff is gorgeous, beautiful. What I'm seeing around the world with, with art and they, a lot of them reach out to me, my goal is to help them, whether they're a director, writer, it doesn't matter. We have the outlet to do this for, and Tosh will tell you that. It's important. So, you know, when Ruth Davies, you know, told me about that, I'm like, I love to have him on. You know, I, I know his work, but did I've never met the guy, but my hat goes off to him. I love that piece that you have behind you. And, you know, mm -hmm. Howard Wiggins, who never misses a show, he is our art collector. I don't even yeah, know where Howard piece. is. Yeah, Howard 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 Howard. Be, I don't know. He'd probably be doing yeah. nuts over this, you know? So when it comes to that, talk about that piece. Talk about some of your art in Leno coming back to you to segue into that muse. Uh, you talking about this piece behind me? Oh, yeah, I love that. No, is, it's a is portrait. that you? Is that you in the no, back? Like, is, no, like, it's, no, it's not me. Um, he's a friend. Um, and I painted that uh, maybe uh, six, seven years ago. Um, it's just a friend who came to the studio for, for a drink and... And on the way on the Uber, he he was dumped by his girlfriend. So he came down. He came he, as soon as he got into the studio, he started to cry. And they had a very weird personal story, and he shared it with me. And I thought it was um, uh, crazy enough to take a photo of him and paint it, paint him. You know, while he was super um, uh, hurt, but it was not cool that moment. But, up until now, he, he doesn't stop to uh, say thank you. Like, how come you captured that moment? Because uh, it was a very crazy story in his life. So it was just a moment that I captured a guy. And, you know, he looks like um, he's, uh, he was oh, very- Oh, wow. Open. I can see the face now. That's, oh, yeah. I love that. That's, that's gorgeous. So beautiful. beautiful. Yeah, I, I was looking at that the whole, like while you were talking, I'm like, wow, this is so like, it like, I was so gravitated to it. It's looked really like, cool. um, you know, like on the phone, like when you paint on the phone, it's like you scribble, right? Yes, yes, mm -hmm. okay. Like a negative thing, and I put them in a negative part, and not a positive part, that was the whole idea. But but that was where he was, like he was super negative, and now he's very positive. So if I'll paint it right now, it's probably a little bit different. But um, yeah, that's it's, it's it, it was the moment of crazy story that he had. Um, I think it's too personal. So I won't share his story, but 
that's pretty much what I do. I uh, I hear stories of people, and then I'm trying just to capture them and and draw them and and you know bring it to life. And and now seven years later, I still think about his story, and he completely forgot about it. Like he's not there anymore. But every time I look at it, I'm like, I kind of remember that. So. Yeah, it's so palpable the feeling you get from it. I mean, even just from like this little screen, you know, it's beautiful. Thank you. Thank I you. love that that part of it's a fragment, you know, like we're not seeing all of him, you know. Yeah, uh, it's a part of a collection that I did. It called, it's called uh, Incomplete. So those are a bunch of paintings that are not finished. So it's like not a whole canvas is kind of painted and it's kind of scribbles and stuff like that. Hey, Lena, before that. we go back into you, I want you to meet my two co-hosts. So, Hi, Tosh, guys. tell who you are, followed by Terry. Go ahead. So, I'm Tosh, or Natasha Rumbos, but um, everybody calls me vocally Tosh, because that's my handle on Instagram. And uh, I'm a singer-songwriter that lives in Miami. I'm originally from Venezuela, but I was raised here. And I love music, and that's what I, that's that's my main uh, goal in life, as to do music like you know until i it's my time to go and um, i've been doing it for four years professionally where i've been writing my own music collaborating with producers and it's a very um it's urban latin i do a lot of spanish music and it's it's kind of like if you could tell from the camera here like my energy is always very high so all my music is very high energy trying to like give those energies out to people you know and and it's it's very fun it's very fun i actually am wearing one of my merch hats which is a song that i released back in november it's called sugar daddy it's a very fun you know miami song and um and that's that's my passion i've been doing it uh, for a while been like having shows i've been able to perform in vegas and new york and um and i'm independent so i do this all by myself and uh, i'm a bartender as well so that's what pays for all my music sessions and that's where you get like this whole like you know vibrant gal it's always like da, 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 da. so that's me and uh, i also do uh radio um so i do have some news for terry and brian well brian knows but um i was working with the radio station of la mega in rochester and i did that for a year which was amazing and i got a beautiful opportunity to start a morning show here in miami so i started doing that last week yeah i started doing that last congratulations week. So, um, thank you thank you so monday through friday if you're ever in miami you want to hear like a you know a picante morning show then um i'm on from nine in the morning to 12 and it's been such a fun time been having i'm so glad i decided to go towards my dream and work on it even though it's you know it's hard anything in the entertainment industry art world as you guys you know know it, it's hard and honestly i don't regret any any decision that i've you know done and i'm very happy and i'm just gonna continue until tosh baby's on the top okay that's me <laughs> so good all right all right Thank all right Terry, go for it uh, hi guys, I'm uh, Terry McAdams here in Sherman Oaks, California. Um, I do a plethora of things. <laughs> Some of this stuff has been put on hold. As Brian knows, I've been trying to take care of my elderly mom. Um, so some of the stuff has been put on hold, but it's starting to come back as uh, one. I haven't done a fitness show in four years. I'm a fitness competitor, but I've chosen the show to do January, I'm uh, sorry, June 14th in Anaheim. I have committed myself. <laughs> I have found a trainer, so I'm back at it. So I know I've been talking about it for quite a while, just haven't had the opportunity to, yeah. to do that. Um, then I actually, I mean, I've, I've been acting off and on my whole life. Um, I've been co-host with Brian for over, for 10 years now. Oh, wow. um, so I do a lot of the red carpet interviews. Um, for like the celebrity gifting suites and celebrity events. Um, I'm also um, in the world of orthopedics. Um, I work for a bracing and support company. So we work with a lot of athletes, physical therapists, uh, athletic trainers, orthopedic surgeons um, with OA and um, oh, like arthritis, arthritis bracing and then braces actually for sports for to prevent sports injuries. Um, and then as Brian said, I do have an art project that I'm working on that guy kind of put, got put on hold because it wasn't completely finished. So I'd like to finish that. It's just sometimes family comes first and I had to take this time off to 
deal with my mom who's getting older and has Alzheimer's and has a lot of health issues. So, but you know, I love her and she's not going to be around forever. So, you know, I had to put a little stuff on hold, but I am back or I'm slowly getting back. And Brian knows that. <laughs> so glad to, nice to meet everybody. You so many hats. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so many hats. Well, you should talk. I mean, you in English and French. I mean, so <laughs> then you segue into Greek, film. No. <laughs> well, yes, that yeah, that's why you were at the Greek Film Festival, Los Angeles <laughs> Greek Film Festival. And you know, Melinda Manis, I ran into her last week uh, at uh, the the function for Vince Manano for the 100th anniversary of the Hollywood sign. So yeah. Melinda, you know, we 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 go back a ways now, which is great. So I love anything Greek. And that's really, really important. But you being that now, I know you've always had that filmmaker hat on, even probably while you were acting, but now you really get to put that in work. What's that feel like? Well, it, it is um, a lot of work. <laughs> you know, with, with, I mean, acting has its own, it, but this is like really having to oversee everything and get all the pieces working and having be synergistic. <laughs> Um, but I really, I really love it. It's, it's some, sometimes it feels daunting because it's all very expensive. You know, it adds up so fast. Even the simplest things, even the doc, which is still requires a team for us to film these big events and these small events. And um, it, uh, but it's all, it, 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 it's really very, very, I mean, I've always loved cinema. I've always been obsessed with, you know, Bellini and, you know, Spike Lee, Do the Right Thing was just a, Requiem for a Dream. There's so much cinema that I just am crazy for, and I was from very early on, that it's really exciting to put all these pieces together and, and you know, be a conductor almost. You know, it's really magical when it comes together. Now, when it fails, it's not quite so magical, but it's a learning experience. <laughs> It is there life go. experience. Yeah. That, that, yeah. that is one way to look at it, po positive, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. And, and with Tomer, you know, when it comes to that art. I mean, you take a lot of things and, and I just know with all the things you've seen and, you know, being in that Israeli army and, and what you've done, I can, you know, your art just sticks out, man. Congratulations with what you've done and, and the things that you're doing to make this world a better place. That's all I can say. Talk about what that feeling is like for you. Uh, wow. It's a lot. Um, you know, I, uh, since, uh, since I got back from Israel after October 7th, I, um, I, I, I can't work on any project beside, beside, you know, what I'm doing right now with all the groups and the art therapy, but um, and I'm, and I'm working on a huge exhibition with uh, all those groups. But um, uh, if, if, you know, I'll, I'll take back. Um, I kind of hard to talk about it as, as you know, for, I, I just cannot paint anything that is not related to my experience. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's 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 a good thing and it's a bad thing. So I, I'm I'm usually a person who can work on ten different projects in once that get nothing to do with each other. But right now is I think the first time in my career when I am um, um, working about one project only, and that's the only thing I can do. Not because I want to, just because I cannot really create about anything beside beside that experience I had on October 7th and the, the, the whole week after October 7th. So, um, uh, you know, it's not easy. I have a lot of uh, triggers. I, I fight post-trauma for the past 18 years already. So it's not new to me, but lately I have a lot of triggers. And it, while I'm working on those, it's, you know, it, it brings up a lot of, uh, uh, memories and and so you know it's very extreme to to a lot of fun and very inspiring and very deep and very sad and and can be very traumatic sometimes so um it's super extreme uh that new project with with all those groups and you know uh, talking about the october 7th thing let's take a look at this so you can talk about this. It, it's it's very interesting. So this is um, a video that was done by Mike Michael Mike Cannon. Um, we filmed, you know, the whole art um, 
a flash mob gorilla that we did inside Art Basel. Here you see people dancing after everything is done. It was not part of the flash mob, but um, people started to dance, even people that were not part of it. So that was very interesting. And then, um, that was the part when the police let me go. <laughs> and I know it sounds bad, but I gotta say the police were so nice. Um, they just didn't let me go in because the Art Basel um, people didn't want me in because uh, they thought I'm going to disturb and probably in a disrespectful way, which it was not the plan. So uh, they closed Art Basel for like maybe half an hour, if I'm not mistaken, uh, because they they were, I don't know what they were scared about, you know? Um, and hundreds of people just start to lay down in different spots in um, the gallery, the whole convention center. And, and, and some people even ask like, uh, why are you guys laying down? So they, they say about October 7 massacre attack. So they start to lay down too. So <laughs> it was very wow. um, interesting. And I saw everything on um, WhatsApp messages. I, I was not there because I was outside detained. Uh, they didn't let me in. You know, was, uh, I, I know what it's like to get kicked out of something when I've invited too many friends or I'm doing my thing to make someone else shine. And the, the way I look at it, because I, I know what a lot of those art shows are like. They want to they wanna make sure that everything is done correct. You know, they don't want anybody who's going to be acting out so much. But at the same time, this was art. This was for a cause. And I love what it was for, what was pulled off. And look, the message was there, right? Yeah. Look, I, I get them. You know, people pay a lot of money to show their art over there. And then some dude is coming from LA and doing its thing. I get that. You know, I... <laughs> I, uh, I understand the art dazzle people. I understand the police. I also understand myself. Uh, we did what we did. You know, it's it, it was it was super interesting to see it. Well, the whole thing about that is all of us are artists in a different way. Nobody draws the same thing. No one creates that same piece of poetry. You know, you you know, Elena, you were talking about Spike. You know, I remember when Spike first started. When you know she's got to have it <laughs> and everything, you know. I when I run into him, I'm like, it's like I remember dragging you on your birthday at the Jamaica Club. You didn't know where you were. You could have been, and this was in Los Angeles. You didn't remember anything, you know. And that was our friendship going way, way back. So to see a lot of these filmmakers now, I'm happy. So one of the mm -hmm. things, and, and Terry and, and Tosh and everybody else, our other causes will tell you, I'm always championing women causes. I'm always putting those things out there which is why, you know, we are one of the world's best of all the stuff that we're doing. And, and Tosh will tell you, I'm so happy with what she's doing, you know, doing everything. And, you know, she didn't know what she was going to sign up with when she hooked up with us, <laughs> but she's made it work. So, you know, Elena, when it goes to you, again, directing is not easy. I, you couldn't pay me to direct or to be an actor or a writer. I bet you'd be really good at it. I have well, a feeling you'd be say, great at I it. Think I think Brian I'm not interested in that. that. I'm interested in promoting people's finished product. That's where I get off doing that. Whether it's that piece of artwork or that poetry, you know, we, you know, we, at the Hudson Theater in Hollywood, we sold out uh, an event, that 99 seater. Uh, I, I, I didn't get poetry, and then these people, they walked off the street into our off Broadway uh, production, and the best poetry I've ever heard in my life. I was like. I get poetry now. I get it. It took them to come to our event when we didn't even know them. Now they're friends. They're coming on the show in a couple of weeks to do that. Mm -hmm. So when I hear that people are into poetry are like Terry, I, that's why I'm always encouraging her to do things. And we argue. She's like my sister, literally. You know, but I, I want everybody to succeed. But Natasha will tell you, when people come on, our co-hosts get jobs. People connect. They become part of movie reviews, the more part. And that's what I wanted. And Rebel, and I think you have a couple pictures to show. And that's one reason why I wanted Elena on. And the reason why I wanted her on, and I knew what she was going to, this is the photo. Yeah, see her face? Was it I, I, <laughs> Tosh, Tosh and Terry, see how happy she was? It mm -hmm. was her presence. She didn't have to say anything. And I said, who is this woman? 
And I'm like, oh yeah, I've seen her on Shameless. I've seen her on all these other shows, but we have just never met. And she didn't know me, you know, I'm just some black guy at a Greek film festival. Well, you know, it's just one of those <laughs> things that happen like that. But Tomer, I love this photo of you. This is great. This to me says a lot. This says you've been through everything, literally. And that's what I love about these. A very nice picture. Actually, today I was trying like, to change the photos. <laughs> very editorial. Uh, my hair got longer, and I was trying to uh, get a better photo. It just doesn't work. I, I, I don't know. Well, let me tell you this. I uh, and I knew this was going to happen going back to 08. I've become part of the Israeli groups on a lot of things. I've been I've been welcomed into the Greek organization, which Elena, which is why I was there. You know. Um, I've, I've seen nothing but great Greek films. I've seen nothing but great Israeli films. And, you know, Fridays, you know, my Israeli friends, you know, they would invite me over. And, you know, we would have the dinners. And I love this. It's, it's an honor for me to be there uh, because I get a chance to understand different people's histories and cultures. And that is what we're supposed to do, right? Elena, when you're telling a story now and you're acting, that's what we're supposed to do. When Tosh comes on, I let her do her thing. I want Terry to be more like that. And Rebel, you know, she helps me, you know, she and I have, you know, I think she's going to be my other sister from Louisiana because we, we joke a lot on, 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 on private issues and things like that. But it's funny. But Elaine, to talk about this, when you started getting your first print campaign, your first commercial, what did that do for you as that young lady who was bright eyed and bushy eyed, the one that I know that I met at the Los Angeles Greek Film Festival, which is why I showed that photo for you. <laughs> now you know why I took it, huh? <laughs> um the the early early bookings you know it was it was a, it was i mean oops it was a, learning a whole new whole new language i was i was born and raised in new york in chelsea when chelsea was not very nice um even you know it was it was it was a pretty um my dad had a like a really an, an like an intense diner that it was it's a lot of life going through that and seeing a lot of broken people. And um, so coming to LA was like, what? it was a, such a different reality. Um, and, uh, and, you know, it's, it's hard to figure, I mean, going to film school does not segue you into figuring out how to pursue acting. No. So it really was sort of, you know, you know, finding, you know, finding an agent and finding the right agent. It's not just any agent. You have to find the right agent. So, I mean, those first bookings were obviously very exciting. You were like, oh my gosh, I should I, you know. Um, but it was a lot of hustle, a lot of driving, a lot of, you know, trying to build that resume and that experience. And It's a lot. And I always said this, because I grew up in Connecticut. Trial and error. It's trial and error. <laughs> exactly. Life experiences. Coming from mm -hmm. New York, it usually takes New Yorkers 10 years to either like it or they absolutely will never like Los Angeles. That's just what it is. <laughs> and then, you know, they can't wait to get out of there because they're used to having everything in New York. When you come from Israel, man, you're bringing that culture over and that could be a shock in a different way. But at the same time, you know, it's 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 game on, right, Dalma? You're on uh, mute right now. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, there you, go. Um, no. you know, I think Israelis, uh, they have so much, so many <clears throat> stories because of the multi culturized you know like you know our parents came from so many different countries mm -hmm. and, and 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 israel is like is like so many countries in one and i think that's why when we uh when we get to los angeles or those places i think i think israelis has a lot to bring to the table as far as creative mm -hmm. um i know a lot of creative israelis that are so good so good and and when you really go deep in it you you understand why because because they their entire childhood and their entire process they they bring so many cultures to it and and we all know it's not a secret as long as as much as you travel more as, as much as you experience more in life you obviously your mind is open and, and you can bring more into your creation and i think this is why um israelis that come from israel um they have a lot to bring to the creative world because because of where our parents and grandparents came from and what we've been learning at home and and, and stuff like that and now i'm not even getting into 
the whole Jewish thing and wars and then stuff like that. But um, I, I think uh, like, you know, Elena, you know, uh, you, know you, you came from, you know, to LA and, and I, like many other Israelis around and, and I think Israelis has a lot to bring to the creation uh, uh, table here in Los Angeles. Um, a lot more than, than many other cultures, by the way, but this is just a point of view and, and I, I like to see it on Israelis. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I tell the team, you know, one of the reasons why, you know, I go to a lot of the events, one, because I'm invited, but two, just to pay homage to the culture, you know, whether it's the Armenians or, or you know, and Terry knows our friend Jean, who's Ukrainian Russian, you know, they're all of our friends. And no matter what, you don't want anything to happen to them. But we want to we want to celebrate that culture, the art that they bring. You know, whether it's in the world of fitness or fashion or whatever, it doesn't matter. When I see Tosh out there and I tell her, you know, do this or tinker with that, but she's got open air to do whatever she wants. I couldn't be more happy, and and she knows I mean that because I've seen her do some <laughs> things that the average person doesn't want to do, but she's she's open to doing stuff and she gets it. You know, so I love it when our, our co-hosts and our guests go on and other our, our other friends who do interviews have them on the show because they saw them on our show. They go, Brian, can I have them? Oh, uh, yeah. Let me reach out to them, see if they want to do that. But that's what it's all about, telling stories in different ways. You can't tell it on one outlet. It doesn't go for it. It's got to go all around. Right, Tosh? Absolutely. Brian, you're always like, you can take them, I mean, you can borrow them, but you got to give them back to me, okay? Like, <laughs> no, it's the like, rubber no, band no, no, effect. Don't take my co-host away. <laughs> they can, well, no, they, they know there's a line of others willing to, <laughs> to step in for them. Usually we have four people on and then, we, you know, Howard's never missing a show. I don't know where he is. So that means something happened. And he's dressed to the nines and he's, he's you know, Tennessee royalty. He's, he's Father started the Grand Ole Opry with oh, wow. Eddie Arnold. Think about that. You know, we're we, you know we're part of the Elvis Presley brand. You know, St. Jude's Hospital, all of these things like that. So I have I'm a piece of everything now. I I saw some of it coming, but not all of this. In a way, Elena, I feel like I'm an actor, but no behind the scenes, if that makes sense. I always say, leave me alone. Let me do my thing, and I'll make everybody look good. But don't tell me what to do because with 33 million views and counting. We didn't get here by people telling me what to do. It's the other way around. That's why we do it. Right, Tosh? Right, Terry? Yeah, for some. Toma, talk about it's this. There's a lot of people. Oh, go ahead, Tosh. Go ahead. I was gonna say it's all for the for the love of you know our art, you know, it, it, communication, um, and, and, and part of an art. So it's you know, it's your love for it, it's our love for it, our passion for it, and people see that, and that's why people are attracted to it. Absolutely. So we got to take a look at this trailer. And then, Elena, you tell me what's going on with the documentary, with that feature film. And if there's a short, I think you said, too, right? Well, this this is the sh this is um, we're doing the short first so that we can build it towards the feature for this project for ISOM. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the teaser. It's really a teaser, a taste of it, of the short film. wasn't my intention. The anemia of my life is an ongoing accident. There's that first day that you can't really remember. And 
then one long, slippery slope. You tell yourself you'll do whatever gets you through, and then you'll get on with your life. Once you've regained your even keel. And in the meantime, you strike a deal with strange instincts. Like instating a wartime general. Tosh, your thoughts, because I'm going to tell you what I thought. Your thoughts, Tosh. I don't know how. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm pretty sure I know why, but um, I got goosebumps watching, you know, that trailer. I, I just, I, I, this is how I, what I think it could possibly be about is that um, these two different, you know, women are just going through some type of, you know, traumatic event that has happened. And this is like their way of dealing, you know, with the different ways. And they're like, do you understand? Is that, is that what the, is that the right message that I got from it? Essentially, yeah, because they both suffer from comorbid OCD and body dysmorphia. Mm -hmm. And we watch these two women who are not in the same space, but sort of finishing each other's story, by yeah. the way. That was that was missing at the ending. <laughs> this is like oh, that's the wrong thing. Um, it's missing like, a little bit of the ending. Um, but it, this is this is really just a teaser. It's not really the trailer. Um, because we still we're still in the editing phase of this film. We were trying to put something together to showcase and use it to parlay it as we keep finishing this off. Um, so uh, yeah, so basically these two women are struggling with this and measuring and fixating and and you know giving. I, I, torturing themselves um, from what they're having to deal with and finding ways to navigate it as the, if they can, as they, as it goes on and how they, and how they affect their partners, how this affects every aspect of their lives. Mm -hmm. But it's really trying to get across that internal feeling of what this feels like. Terry, your thoughts on this? Because I can't uh, wait to say something. <laughs> uh, I just think, um, you know, more people go through pain than you realize. And it just, there's a, I don't know, human, it's, it was a human connection for me with looking at these ladies just because, I don't know, there's just a lot of pressure on, I think, everybody just to be a certain way, both men and women, and to act a certain way, look a certain way. And sometimes it's like, you just have to be you. And I don't know, you know what I mean? Like, it just, I, I put a lot of pressure on myself. So I can relate to some of that because um, I always feel like I'm not good enough or not doing things enough. And I think a lot of us feel that way. So I connected with that emotion. Tomo, your artistic eye, what did you see? Because I've been dying to say something. I'm going to wait. Go ahead. Um, you know, in my world, um, I would I would define it as realism, right? That's mm. for me like hyper realism. It's um, I can I can easily get connected and feel the connection even between even myself and those two two ladies i think i think uh, i think elena you, you're touching uh someone's real stories and and if you if you really go deep and be honest mm -hmm. we all like that in a different ways 
And, and if you can find yourself, but not as far as the weight and everything, but if you can find yourself, I think um, it, 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 it's super, super realistic. And um, um, I, I like it because uh, you're going dark and, and, and you expose the, our dark sides, you know, the, the, the things that people don't see. It, it's, it's like, you know, you expose the things that only you see in the front of the mirror when, when you're in the shower, when it's only you with yourself and that's mm -hmm. where usually the dark stuff coming out and and this is all my i usually create about stuff like that so i really get it i like it i get it i get attracted to it um it, um i can't wait even to watch the entire movie you know um oh, it's it, I, I feel very um like a similarity between your creation and, and when i paint somebody's somebody's story Okay, I've been waiting for this for a whole hour. Well, actually, an hour and a half. All right, Elena, you directed this? Yes. This is yeah. one of the best. Trailers. I did not write it, though. Two, two wonderful writers. No, no, no. End. I've been doing this since 1991. <laughs> I've seen all, all, a little bit over 31,000 films. This is one of the best, I call this a trailer, that I've ever seen. And I'll tell you why. And it's not because you're here, because I have to go through so many films that are submitted to me from film festivals around the world. Jewish is, you know, Greek, you know, dances with films, you name it, Hollywood, all of them. I have to watch and I watch all of them. And you know why? Because someone put their time and effort into creating something like this. I saw light in this. I saw the colors in this. I saw, wow, all the people that I'm helping to do stuff. I said, she directed this? No wonder I stopped her on the red carpet. This is one of the reasons I knew there was something there. She's going to be a great director. And, you know, when you said you kind of went to school for this and everything, I can't wait to see this. I need to see this right away because everybody knows I'm a movie whore. So when I see stuff like this, I never stop talking about stuff. Never. And Howard would tell you, you know, I love getting first dibs on technology, artwork, anything like this i don't care what it is i want to be the first to showcase things like that i got stuff for dances with films going into you know national film festival right now that i'm holding on to that's great so you did a great job with this hats off to you this is and Thank i don't you. like trailers on purpose because i don't want to figure it out in 10 minutes and i do i have no idea what's going on i love the coloring on this i love the score this is excellent. It gets the four E's from movie reviews and more. Not because you're here. Even if you weren't here, I'd be talking like this. It's and a wonderful editor. Yeah. It's energetic. It's engaging. It's entertaining. And it's emotional. And you'll only get that from movie reviews and more because we started this rating back in 1993. <laughs> I've got to say, um, Alex Cartagena and Remy Marks, uh, Remy, Remy Marks, Remy Dahl, Alex Cortina, Marks is her last name, uh, and Remy Dahl. Um, Remy wrote it, and they co-finished it together and developed it. And Summer Spira, who's our editor, um, was also magical in finding those sound, you know, free sound, free music <laughs> that we could piece together to create that mood and tone that we wanted, that ethereal, fragile, like everything, like it's vapor. And we, I really wanted the quality of the film to look like we were looking almost through a gauze, um, a very gauze-like uh, paleness to it, which again has that fragility and that that suffering that they're, that self-punishing that they're doing, kind of feel that. Give you social media links for everybody and when do you think we can possibly see this? Um, my social media links, I was like, oh my. Um, <laughs> Uh, Instagram is Lelena Eva because it was not available. Uh, so there's an L in front of Elena Eva. And um, on uh, it's Elena Evangelo on IMDb and all that. And uh, I have elenaevangelo.com as well. And um, Facebook, I believe, is also Lelena Eva. And I think Twitter is too. So that makes it a little easier. <laughs> and what do you think we can see it? I will hopefully we will. Uh, we have a little tiny bit of pickup that we want to do to fill in a tiny few things. And then hopefully by May, we should be all done and start to submit it. Good. I'll, I'll help you guys do that. Locally oh, Tosh, go ahead and go for it. Social media thank links. Yeah, so Vocally Tosh on all social media platforms. My website is natasharumbosmusic.com. And uh, yeah, check me out on YouTube to watch all my music videos, which are very fun, energetic, and Get all the ease from Brian. 
And uh, thank you for, for joining us today. It was really nice and, and eye-opening to, to hear about, you know, your art and, and everything you guys are working towards for. So you guys are a blessing. So thank you. Terry Marie, nonstop. Uh, nonstop Terry Marie on all platforms. And then Terry Marie on Fistol.com is my website. Tomer, give your social media links for everybody. And real quick, we're, we're, you know, what's coming up next for you? Um. I'm working on a new exhibition, um, flying out to Israel to work with uh, hostages families, hostages that came back, injured soldiers, and different different uh, stories and, and 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 angles that uh, were experienced. Uh, uh, you know, that the part of that war. Um, I'm gonna go back to work with Zaka, which I was you know volunteering with them uh, to recover the dead bodies from Barry and and. The Nova Festival, so I'll be working with Zaka again, and it will be some kind of a closure. It will be part of. Uh, I'm going to create with them. They're going to be part of uh, the whole uh, ex new exhibition that is coming up. Thank you for that. Thank you for you both coming on and everybody. And you know, I'd love to have you guys back, Lena. I definitely will help you because that's what we do, anyhow. And yes. I, I know, I'm used to picking films, so I know what that process is like. Tomer, when you come back, I would love to have you on to get an update on that because you can never stop talking about that. And as I always say. Have a good night tonight, a better day tomorrow. You see someone without a smile, please give them one of yours because the world needs it. I'm Brian Sebastian. This is Movie Reviews and More, and we will see you next week.